many battles under the Clone Wars umbrella, the Republic relied on the support of local populations to win the day, as native help usually resulted in better intel, greater numbers and better odds overall. Clones had to work with locals so often that there were even entire units dedicated to such missions, with the most notable of them being the 41st Elite Corps. Privately, however, most clones detested those sorts of missions. By and large, clone troopers hated working with native populations, and in this video, we'll be discussing why. Attention, Sergeant on deck! As we've said many times before, the Clone Wars were really a collection of thousands of small simultaneous local civil wars in which the Republic and the CIS regularly intervened. The Grand Army of the Republic and the CIS droid army were essentially elite forces sent to reinforce local planetary security forces engaged in battles considered important by command. In most battles, there were local forces the GAR had to factor into their battle plans. On hostile worlds like Geonosis, they had to factor the Geonosians in alongside enemy droid units as hostiles, while on some other worlds, local forces were small, disinterested, or could otherwise be persuaded to just stay out of the way. However, there were also those worlds that had loyalist home forces which were committed to fighting the battle, and these were the operations clone troopers largely dreaded. This was because, by and large, local forces were inferior to the GAR and in battle, they tended to hold their clone allies back. The clones weren't chumps, after all. They were elite soldiers who had been bred for war and trained by the best of the best for a full decade. The same couldn't be said for most local forces, and no local force had been trained to work smoothly with the GAR. When Republic forces in a battle were exclusively GAR, clones could rest assured that they were in good company, as all the other clones thought like them and fought like them, more or less. Local forces, on the other hand, were just another blasted complication. Firstly, locals made logistics a nightmare. Logistics were usually a pretty simple operation for the Grand Army of the Republic, since clones all had the same biological specifications and so forth. But if clone units needed to outfit or resupply local forces, logistics suddenly became a nightmare. Many local forces were poorly equipped, so these scenarios played out a lot, as the Republic would need to equip them properly if they were to be of any use in battle. These complications were made even worse when local forces were non-human or composed of multiple species. In particular, the GAR usually needed to supply local forces with weapons. Watching Star Wars The Clone Wars, you may have noticed that the Republic-aligned local forces seem to use GAR-issued blasters a lot, especially DC-15S carbines. This wasn't just the animators being lazy. A lot of local forces had substandard weapons arsenals due to the limits of the Rusan reformations placed on PSFs, or simply due to a lack of funding, so locals often relied on the clones to pack some extra guns. Logistically speaking, the Republic could generally spare a few blasters, but supplying locals with DCs usually brought another headache into play. If locals were going to be using Republic gear, they would need to know how to use it, and the clones were tasked with teaching them. This was always easier said than done. As we discussed in a recent video, standard issue GAR weapons were no joke and very few local fighters would have even been familiar with blasters that powerful. During these sorts of battles, clones found themselves having to teach a bunch of noobs the basics of using a blaster pretty much from scratch, a duty they quickly grew to resent. Furthermore, many local forces were poorly trained or not trained at all. If a local force was to work effectively alongside the Grand Army of the Republic, they would need to at least get close to being on par with the clones. Unfortunately for the Republic, very few local forces were anywhere near on par with the JR. Hell, many local fighters would have been outmatched by even the B1 battle droids. The clones would have to teach native fighters tactics, unit cohesion, equipment specs, and a whole lot more, on top of just weapons training, and what's worse, they would have had to do so in the middle of a battle. Otherwise, they ran the risk of the whole operation going awry. If local reinforcements didn't work well with clone units, it could easily cause the front lines to collapse, costing the Republic the battle. A good example of the kind of force the Republic would have to work with is the Onderon Rebels. The Onderon Rebels technically didn't fight alongside the Republic, rather the Republic trained them and they fought their own battle. But they do still give us a good bit of insight into just how much training local fighters needed. 
The rebels were fighting a war on their own terms, but they still needed Rex to teach them how to shoot droids, and even after getting Republic training, they still needed Ahsoka to walk them through the battle. Even if local forces weren't poorly trained, they often still needed to be retrained as the methods used by local forces tended to clash with those of the JAR. Many native armies had gotten used to fighting a certain way and though their clone reinforcements sometimes followed their lead on such matters, often it was the other way around and that was another frequent source of problems. Many species had traditions for warfare, some with religious significance, and they would get very angry if clones suggested they dispose of them for the sake of winning the battle, as sometimes needed to be done. Again, these weren't exactly rare occurrences either. In fact, the Republic relied heavily on local forces during the first half of the war. Early in the Clone Wars, the Republic had a severe numbers problem due to how slow growing new clones was, so the Jedi developed what they called the Militia Model. According to the Militia Model, the Republic would send a company or two of clones to a Separatist world where they knew there were widespread loyalist sentiments. These clones would work with local resistance groups and form a militia, which they would then direct in retaking the planet. The Republic successfully employed this strategy in many battles, with the most notable being the Battle of Harun Kal and the Battle of Giju. Though, while this strategy was effective, it was still a nightmare for the clones involved. Lastly, it should be noted that some native forces had their own motivations that conflicted with the Republic's reason for fighting. This was actually going to be a plot point in an arc of the Clone Wars that never got produced, in which the Bad Batch would have had to otherwise persuade the Wookiees to burn down some Roshia trees to stop separatist back Trandoshan forces from advancing further. The Wookiees would have been furious at the suggestion and, at first, would have refused to do it, nearly resulting in their defeat. There were conflicts of interest in the actual Battle of Kashyyyk too, and they almost resulted in a firefight behind friendly lines. The Battle of Kashyyyk was concentrated around the Wookiee city of Kakaro, which was located in the Wawat Archipelago, one of the few places on the planet where the forests thinned and the large armies could land. The Republic assumed that General Grievous was attempting to take Kakaro for precisely this reason. They figured he wanted the city for use as a breachhead. But as Republic forces prepared to defend the city, they discovered that Grievous had other motives for taking Kakarot. The city also served as the headquarters of the Klatovak Guild, a legendary secret society of Wookiee astrographers. The Klatovak Guild had charted thousands of secret hyperspace routes all over the galaxy which they used to give Wookiee pilots an edge in trade. These routes would have been invaluable to the Confederacy as they could potentially provide hundreds of new invasion corridors that the Republic didn't even know existed. With the Kladovac Guild's navigational charts, the CIS could have broken the outer rim sieges. When the clones learned about this, they demanded the Wookiees hand over the Kladovac's Guild records to the Republic per protocol, something the Wookiees were unwilling to do. The argument got heated quickly and it was only thanks to the timely intervention of the Jedi that it didn't turn violent. Another case of local forces having their own priorities was the Battle of Harun Kal. Harun Kal was home to two groups of human settlers, the jungle-dwelling Korunai, who were the people of Mace Windu, and more recent colonists known as the Balawai. The two groups absolutely despised each other, and for decades, they had been fighting a conflict called the Summertime War, which occasionally bordered on genocidal. When the Balawai opted to bring Harun Kal to the Confederacy, the Republic saw it as an opportunity to bring the Korunai to their side. They were successful in doing so, and the Confederacy was ultimately driven from Harun Kal but their success ultimately only created more problems. Kar Vastor, the leader of the Koronai militia assembled by the Republic, didn't really care about driving off the Confederacy. He cared about wiping out the Balawai. After the battle was won, he started using Republic resources to essentially commit genocide, stopping only when Mace Windu detained him for crimes against civilization. So that's why clones absolutely detested fighting alongside local forces. But what do you think? Would you like to hear more about the Battle of Harun Kal? Let us know in the comment section below. And just before you go, if you want access to the behind the scenes discord where you can chat to myself and the other team members and access to some exclusive content, check out our Patreon. If you just want access to the music we use in the background of these videos and plenty of the other recent ones too, then check out our Relax Jack music channel where you can listen to it and also use it for some of your creative projects. And if you just want to join our wider community, check us out on our main discord. Anyways guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.